Study says ocean farming could provide all the seafood we need. New research suggests that ocean farming could be enough to fill much of the global demand for seafood. Researchers suggest a farm area the size of Lake Michigan could satisfy the world's current demand for seafood. Their study says that an ocean area of 11.4 million square kilometers could satisfy fishing demands, while 1.4 square million kilometers would be needed for bivalve seafood, such as oysters. However, experts commenting on the study say that while space isn't a limitation for the expansion of ocean farming, costs for operation, production, and transportation could be. Climate change and how humans interact with large-scale ocean farms are another factor that could impact the feasibility of relying on ocean farming. Did you know that nearly 70% of the world is covered in water? And that we know actually very little about it. Japanese drilling boat to probe the Earth's mantle. This Japanese drilling boat could soon be the first ever vessel to penetrate the Earth's mantle. The Earth's mantle is found deep beneath the planet's crust and is much thinner on the ocean floor than on land. It's with this in mind that scientists plan to use the Chikyu drill boat to bore into the mantle by 2030. After sinking four kilometers to the ocean floor, the boat would drill through six kilometers of crust before reaching the mantle. The researchers want to investigate the mantle itself and also if microorganisms exist within it. Yep, there's plastic in your sea salt. Karmic justice comes swift with Mother Nature, as plastic waste we've been throwing in the ocean is now coming back to us, literally, via the food we eat. Microplastic particles typically flow into the ocean, since they're often too small to be filtered out by sewage treatment plants. The tiny pieces of plastic are mistaken for food and ingested by fish and other sea creatures. Seafood meant for human consumption often contain these particles, and now a new study shows that salt may also be a vehicle for plastic contamination. Researchers studied sea salt extracted from eight different countries and found that nearly all were contaminated with 72 foreign particles. Only the one from France was found to be free of contaminants. 30 of the particles were microplastics, 17 were pigments that may have once been plastic, and four were dust particles. 21 could not be identified. Scientists say the current concentration of plastic is low and won't affect human health. But if plastic pollution continues, those levels may increase and potentially become detrimental to our well-being. So for now, maybe ease up on the salt, and more importantly, reduce, reuse, recycle. More worrying news from Antarctica. NASA reports that an iceberg about the size of Delaware split off from Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf between July 10th and July 12th. Scientists warn that the breakoff could trigger new ice cracks and cause even more icebergs to separate from the shelf. Ice shelves are the floating parts of glaciers that act as a support mechanism. In a stable glacier ice shelf system, the glacier's downhill movement is offset by the buoyant force of the water at the ice shelf front. The system is destabilized when warmer temperatures melt both the surface and underside of the ice shelves, and this eventually leads to calving. However, collapsed ice shelves do not directly contribute to sea level rise as they float. Once the ice shelves are calved, the buoyant force that previously offset glacier flow is gone, and the glacier can slide into the ocean to rapidly affect sea levels. Experts say the remaining 90% of the Larsen ice shelf is held in place by the Bodden ice rise to the north of the rift and Gipps ice rise to the south. Therefore, the ice shelf is unlikely to collapse in the near term. Giant sound waves could subdue tsunamis. The devastating impact of tsunamis could be reduced in the future thanks to the power of sound. According to an applied mathematician's theory, giant sound waves known as acoustic gravity waves could be used to lessen the force of a tsunami before it hits land. The theory states that two acoustic gravity waves would be released from a mitigation station in the ocean toward the tsunami. The acoustic gravity waves would exchange energy with the tsunami, spreading it out and reducing its maximum height. According to the theory, acoustic gravity waves could have reduced the height of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami by 5 meters, which may have saved lives and protected property. Any system based on the theory would require the installation of early tsunami detection systems, which the concept's author says is relatively straightforward. 
However, scientists have not yet worked out how to create acoustic gravity waves, and this presents a challenging engineering problem. 